Hey there, this is Lasso Marcel, aka The Tinker Dad. Welcome to my channel. So on this channel we deal with home automation, home networking and sometimes with related stuff like DIY electronics and even a little bit of 3D printing. So today's video will be about smart switches, or actually not about smart switches but about an interesting and free software solution that you can host and run at home and uh, that will enable you to turn a bunch of stuff into a smart switch into something that can be recognized and uh, used by Home Assistant, your Amazon Echo, or pretty much everything that can deal with smart switches. And that means phone applications or whatever. Anyway, uh, th this will be a short tutorial video where I will show you how to install it, how to run it, how to configure it and how to use it. Let me start today's video with a short demo and then I will explain everything. So what you see here is the Alexa desktop application. I use this instead of a physical device just for demonstration purposes, but uh, it should work with a physical device, of course. On the other side, you can see Home Assistant and uh, I have a specific device for this demo set up uh, in uh, each of the applications. So let me start the demonstration. Turn on the fake speaker. Okay. Set the fake speaker to 50%. Okay. Turn off the fake speaker. Okay. So what did we see here? Uh, you have actually seen a couple of things happening. So first of all, the application uh, reacted to my voice commands, obviously, because I'm using the microphone of my PC. Also, this uh, integration, this device in Home Assistant reacted to the commands as well. And finally, you have seen these little notifications uh, popping up here. Actually, those are produced by a Windows service called IoT Link. I've uh, created a video in the past about IoT Link. I use it up to this very day uh, because uh, it's very useful for monitoring uh, uh, different PCs and uh, controlling them and sending them notifications and so on. So that was uh, the small notification window popping up. I just use it for uh, debugging of what's happening here. Okay, so what is this device, this fake speaker? As, um, its name uh, tells you it's fake, so it's not really a physical device, it's just something I've set up in software. And for that I used the, a piece of software I mentioned in the intro called AJ Bridge. AJ Bridge is a piece of software that enables you to set up uh, these fake devices and present them as actual physical devices to your various smart home controllers around the house. So be it Amazon Echo or Google Home or Home Assistant or some other stuff you use, uh, you will have a high chance that it will work with it. So what does this do and how does it work? Uh, first of all, this is an emulation software. It emulates Philips Hue uh, infrastructure and uh, these devices are uh, presented as Philips Hue devices. Actually, the whole EJ Bridge uh, software it presents itself as a Philips Hue Bridge. So, for example, if you go to Home Assistant and you have your uh, Hue uh, Philips Hue automation set up, uh, it will show as a bridge. If you don't have this, don't worry, we will get back to this later. So, you can see three devices and uh, yeah, one of the is that uh, device called Demo Light, and the other one is Fake Speaker. Uh, and actually, the bridge presents itself as a device as well. So this is the whole integration package with uh, the LAN integration of Philips Hue. Now what does this have to do with smart switches? Because uh, in the intro I mentioned smart, smart switches and now we're talking about lights and Philips Hue and whatnot. So actually uh, there's a caveat here that uh, turns this whole scene a bit upside down. So AJ Bridge uses the local area network integration, means that you don't need, for example, the Amazon 
a skill to integrate uh, this to work with your echoes but in turn uh, you lose some of the capabilities so if I check out for example demo light I can see here that I can uh, uh, set a few things but uh, if I add it to Lovelace and go there you will see that something is missing so I cannot set RGB values I can set a brightness when I uh, say let's say 50% or something like that to my Amazon Echo but I cannot say it to set it to red so from my point of view this is more like a smart switch with a per an extra percentage value than a smart light because what is a smart light without RGB right so yeah this is uh, something like a limitation we have to live with uh, to so this is this is how Philips Hue implemented and uh, sadly if you want uh, uh, the whole package like with um, RGB and stuff this won't work because uh, for that you will need to go the, go through the Philips Hue uh, application and the uh, Amazon Echo skill and whatnot and uh, yeah I just don't like this whole idea of using skills I prefer have everything in local and um, as much LAN controllable as possible. Before continuing and going into the technical details, just one word about this uh, whole speaker idea. So think of it more like an imaginary device that has two properties, an on-off switch and a percentage value. So this can be something like a simple thermostat or a smart water faucet or yeah, a speaker with a volume or whatever that uh, you want to control and uh, something that you're otherwise unable to control with your um, Amazon Echo for example or with Home Assistant. Anyway, now let me show you how you set up uh, AJ Bridge, how you connect it to Home Assistant and then we will set up a few devices and I will explain how this whole thing works under the hood. When it comes to installation steps and stuff like that, uh, we are quite lucky with uh, AJ Bridge because um, yeah, just take a look. Uh, this uh, project pretty much a good candidate for the best documented uh, open source project award, something like that. I mean, just look at the tiny scroll bar and here we go. That's a lot of documentation and not because, not because it's that complicated, but because the authors, uh, kudos for them, decided that uh, they, they will try to explain everything in detail and uh, that includes uh, installation and stuff like that as well. So first of all, AJ Bridge is a Java based program and it is distributed as a Java jar file. If you're not familiar with Java language, don't worry. Uh, the jar file is like a binary. Uh, it just uh, needs uh, a special environment to be run. By the special environment, I mean you need to install something called the JDK. So in case of Windows, it's like downloading JDK, click, click, next, next, the usual wizard stuff. In case of Linux, it's uh, yeah a few commands. Okay, uh, I'm not going into details about that because there are literally hundreds if not thousands of video tutorials out there how to install JDK, um, how to run Java programs. In case of uh, AJ Bridge, it's just a single command assuming that you are done with the GDK installation part. To run it, you will just need, again, the GDK, which means having a Java binary on your pass, and you download this single jar file, and this is the command that will you will use to execute it. This pretty much works on Windows, Linux, and uh, on Mac as well. And that includes, I mean, uh, the Linux part includes every flavor, including Raspberry Pis and stuff like that. So, uh, in case of Linux, uh, because uh, this acts like as a server, in case of Linux, you might want to have something more sophisticated. Uh, and uh, the rest of the video will concentrate on the Linux part. As I mentioned before, the documentation is quite extensive and it gives you a couple of options to run uh, AJ Bridge on Linux. However, I decided to do something differently. 
So instead of running it on a bare bone um, operating system like on Raspberry Pi OS or instead of running it in Docker, I decided to go and use it in an LXC container on Proxmox. And that way you will also see how lightweight this whole solution is, uh, especially considering that it's a Java application which are known to be resource heavy. Again, not this one, but you will see. So let's just go to Proxmox and uh, let me show you the installation steps. First of all, let's assume that you have a running Alexi container. Um, creating Alexi containers is quite easy, but uh, if you face some kind of trouble here, just give me a shout. I, at this point, I even consider uh, doing a basic video on setting up uh, services in Alexi containers, because uh, since I started to use them, um, like a few months ago, I pretty much fell in love with the technology here. And um, yeah, you will see a lot of uh, LXC containers on this channel in the future as an alternative to Docker containers. So I have this one up and running. Uh, I created this for this purpose and then now it actually runs uh, uh, AJ Bridge. But since setting it up is uh, so easy, I will just show how it works. First things first, you need uh, GDK up and running on the LXC container. This uh, takes three commands to install, uh, in case of Ubuntu at least. So the first is the usual, you use a, a apt update that will uh, fetch the latest package list, then apt upgrade that will uh, upgrade the existing packages, and then a little bit of longer one which is like and uh, once uh, this is completed, then you can issue commands for the Java binary. So like uh, Java dash version will tell you that you have this version of Java installed your system on your system. So once this is done, you can uh, start uh, installing uh, uh, EGBridge itself. So all you need is a folder where you download the jar file. So in my case, the folder is slash opt slash AJ bridge. And this is where I downloaded the jar file uh, from the uh, GitHub repository. It can be found here at the releases part. The easiest part here is to just download it here directly into the container. So you grab the URL of the jar file and then use a command like wget that will uh, download the file for you. So once that is done, um, you are ready to run it. You don't need anything else, just that uh, system deconfiguration file that is uh, also detailed in the documentation. I also created a short script, which looks like this. It's as you can see, it's basically the same command. I prefer to edit this script if I need to play around with uh, uh, different command line options for whatever reason, you don't have to. Uh, instead of um, just uh, editing the system deconfiguration file all the time. But again, both options are viable. So regarding the system deconfiguration file that you need to create, it should be under slash etc slash systemd slash system and uh, yeah it should be whatever name you want I named it uh, agbridge.service the important name uh, important convention here is the dot service file extension so this is how it looks like uh, I will uh, just uh, paste it as a GitHub gist and uh, we'll link it in the description so you, have, you can just copy paste. Actually there is also one slight modification uh, compared to this uh, similar file that is listed in the documentation. So I replaced uh, this uh, network.target with network-online.target without going too much into the technical details. This uh, ensures that um, uh, AG Bridge will be only started whenever the network is fully ready and that means uh, the container has an assigned uh, IP address and so on. This uh, makes the whole thing start like 
two seconds slower or something like that but uh, yeah better safe than sorry network target pretty much does the same but uh, uh, these two are just uh, different phases of the network initialization and network online is later uh, it depends on the previous one and uh, with a service like this you want to wait to make sure that the network is already started after this point the steps are pretty much identical to those listed in the documentation you first have to make sure that uh, system they picks up the configuration via change for that you need to use system control daemon reload and then you will need to start the service which is again system control start AJ bridge dot service this is the name of the configuration file you have uh, made then if you want to have this service restarted every time you start your container which is like the point of the whole service thing you need to enable it like this I obviously didn't do that because the service is already up and running on my system but what I can do and what you should do just to make sure everything is okay is to use the status command instead of enable like this and if everything went well then you should see status active running whatever we are good to go so now with the installation done we can see how uh, little resources this uh, stuff needs so if you go to proxmox to in proxmox to summary you can see cp usage is basically non-existent and then uh, memory usage is uh, super low considering it's a service written in java so even a half gig of memory is like an overkill for it uh, anyway if you're not using proxmox or you don't want to mess with Java and systemd and whatnot, then uh, your best bet is to use Docker. In this video, I will not go into details about Docker because that would take much longer and uh, just uh, with all the options, the video would turn into something super long, which is already turning into. So let's continue with uh, the now installed uh, AJ bridge. Let me show you some configuration because um, this is where things can get tricky. When you take a look on the UI of AJ Bridge for the first time, uh, it can be a little bit confusing. And uh, kind of it is, I give you that. So I will just quickly guide you through it. So first of all, this is the screen you see. And this is the main screen where your devices are listed. And um, well, you can... Uh, do some testing here you can see this list and you can edit them delete them and uh, because this list is prepared to host a huge number of devices there are some filters including and whatnot in case you want to add your first device you need to use this tab so you go to add edit and uh, you are here presented with a number of fields out of these fields the most important is the name of the device so this is the name that will be also picked up by your Amazon Echo, for example. And this is the name you will refer to when you are uh, issuing voice commands, like turning it on. So choose this name carefully. Most of these fields can be left as they are. So you can just uh, scroll down to the bottom where you will see a larger section. This is the part where you define what will happen on, in case of different actions. So when you think about this uh, virtual device, you can turn it on, you can change its brightness, you can turn it off, and there's the colors, color setting that I mentioned before that you can't really use without relying on the uh, official phone application of Philips Hue. Uh, since I simply ignore that, in this case, uh, I will just concentrate on these three uh, event handlers uh, that will be triggered in case of a given action. So for example, let's take a look on the on items, which means these items will be triggered uh, when uh, the device is turned on. With the add button, you can add multiple rows here, as you will see. And uh, that is why it uh, referred as items and not a single item. So actually you can chain multiple actions here. 
if you drop down this type of selection, you can see that there's a lot going on here. So actually, these are the different services and devices that you can integrate with, uh, with uh, this uh, event handler. So for example, interestingly, you can run uh, scripts or programs or Linux commands on the host. Or actually, if you're running it on Windows, then probably it will work for Windows commands as well. You can also integrate it with various home automation solutions like Domotix or Home Assistant. Most importantly for us, you can send MQTT messages. Okay, so I selected MQTT message, which means that uh, I will use these other fields to uh, construct an MQTT message that will be sent in case the device is turned on. Now this is where the things get a little bit confusing. So this UI is meant to be something generic. They came up with the idea of uh, having this generic UI and instead of uh, changing the UI depending on what uh, have you selected here, this will always stay the same, but you will sometimes just ignore the fields. So for example, in case of an MQTT message, you will be able to ignore the HTTP verb, HTTP body and so on fields and leave them as they are. Uh, you will concentrate on the target item. Now, the target item uh, expects you to uh, provide some JSON formatted data here. And yeah, again, a tricky part. So it's not the MQTT message, but, uh, but uh, JSON formatted uh, data section that contains the MQTT message you want to send, send and some information about the broker and QoS and, and the usual stuff and the, like the topic. To help understanding this, uh, let's go just uh, here. This section, this tab, is a tool which will uh, help you uh, build uh, messages. So for example, if I uh, enter a topic here, like a slash b slash c, and then set content, which is a, a message content as a JSON. This, will, this tool will help me to construct the JSON I need to uh, copy into the field I have just shown. Uh, sounds confusing and complicated, right? Okay, let's take a different route. So we go to bridge devices and I will just show how I constructed it for an existing device. So let's take a look on fake speaker. I press edit copy, scroll down here, and you can see some of these uh, fields. So as you can see, this looks like an actually a JSON that also has a JSON embedded inside. So it has the client ID, which is the name of your broker. I will get back to that later. It has the topic, which is the topic you want to send your data to, and then, or message to, and then it has the message, which is also a JSON. And because it is a JSON embedded inside the JSON, uh, unfortunately, you have to escape the quotation marks. Not, definitely not the best solution, but kind of works. QoS and retain are those usual MQTT flags. So uh, what about the broker? If you go back to here or actually right here, the bridge control, this is like the options uh, section or the settings section of the AJ bridge UI. This is where you set up all those uh, integrations with different services and some uh, server side configuration for AJ Bridge, like which port it should listen on and stuff like that. So if you scroll down a bit, you will see MQTT client IDs and IP addresses. This is where you register um, brokers. So you give a client ID, which is like a name of the broker. Then you enter a broker hostname or IP address and uh, the port in this format and option you can provide a username and a password 
After that, you can just click add and your broker will be registered. Go back here, click save. The bridge will restart itself. And now, if it, this wasn't uh, filled previously, the MQTT messages tab will also appear. At this point, you can refer to this broker with this ID. And when you uh, compose a message, you can use that ID here. So it's actually not that complicated. Uh, given that you get over the fact that you have to embed the JSON inside the JSON. Also, there are uh, interesting things to try, and these are documented. So if I go to the dim items, which is for uh, the event of uh, changing the brightness, you can see I can refer to the actual value. This way, this is a placeholder. It will be replaced uh, with the actual value whenever the item, whenever this message gets sent. And for the last part, I've left the easiest one. Integration with Home Assistant. So you just open up your Home Assistant UI, go to Configuration, then select Devices and Services. In older versions of Home Assistant, this section is called Integrations, as far as I remember. So you click this one, then click the Add Integration button, then type U, and you select the only result, Philips U. So this is where you have to enter the IP address or hostname of your AJ Bridge installation. So for me it's like this one. Now I click Submit, and when you see this, you just click Submit again. And voila, so you can see two devices already imported, and the bridge itself. You can set areas if you wish to and then click finish. Integration will appear here. If you click three devices uh, or actually the number of devices, whatever is here, then you can see this screen lists uh, the devices and the bridge itself. Now to test it, go to EG bridge and uh, on this screen and on this screen click add edit. Now enter a name let's say new device, you don't have to fill all the, any of the other fields, we will just create a skeleton device. So click update bridge device. And when you go back to home assistant, you should see that it uh, appeared already. So you click this one, you see is the data of, about the device. Now back in EG bridge, you click test on and you should see a message request executed success. Now, you go back to Home Assistant once more and you can see that the device is now on. So, as you can see, there's a live uh, two-direction connection between the two. So, that's it. We have integrated the EG Bridge with Home Assistant and now we can use this and uh, by adding it to Lovelace, you can use the Lovelace UI to control those virtual devices. Okay. Given that the video took long enough, I didn't plan to, to show any more functionality here because, uh, to be honest, I could talk for hours about AG Bridge, different configuration, and the, we could experiment with different uh, uh, integrations. So instead, I will just uh, conclude the video open-ended, and if you have uh, any specific question, like uh, yeah, about uh, the integrations or uh, anything else, or, or it is not working for you, or something like that, then, as usual, use the comment section, and uh, let's discuss it there. So, how do you like this solution so far? As I told you before, it's quite easy to run, but yeah, I must admit, it's not the most convenient nor the most uh, intuitive solution to use, but still, it gives you a lot of opportunities and things to play around with. So, let me close this video with a question. Do you have something similar in your uh, home automation or do you plan to use AJ Bridge? As usual, I'm eager to learn how other people do home automation and yeah, we can share stories and we can learn from each other. So if you have something to tell or, or, or uh, would like to suggest something, then as usual, uh, use the comments below. Also, while you're at it, please consider subscribing. It uh, helps me a lot and yeah, uh, you will be notified about uh, new videos I upload. 
Okay, it's really time to say goodbye. So thanks for watching the video and hope to see you next week, next time with the new one. Have fun. Bye.